Hello, and welcome to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract. In this Explore, we're going to take a look at custom classes. <laughs> Yay! All right, so you might want to make a custom class, and I would imagine for the past while in Zim, you'd be saying, oh, I wish we had a hexagon or something like that. <clears throat> and a pentagon. And so you might be considering making your own custom class for that. Uh, so much so that we've actually gone in the, the recent Zim, in the upcoming Zim, that is, and made a polygon shape. So a poly, a poly class here as a shape. And we've also added a line class as, as a, a class as well. So a line shape is a class. And in doing so, it, it goes beyond just uh, before we were kind of saying, ah, just make a rectangle, <laughs> you know. Um, it's it's a line shape, and in doing so, we've we've had the ability to add ends to it. See see the end here here no here there there see the <laughs> well we can see this end here is a little square, and this, end, this uh, that's a custom end right there that we added, and this end is a. a an arrow, and there's also a circle. So uh, here is a line with a custom end. It happens to be a polygon, or a poly, that is the uh, custom line there. All right, so let's get back out of here. Why don't we reduce this down, and we can um, get into some code. So here is what we're going to uh, take a look at, is how would we create a custom class, and we're going to use the poly as an example. So this is what it would look like without a custom class. And why don't we open this up in a browser and take a peek. There she be, that's what this will make. It makes a polygon, but it's facing the wrong way. I'd rather it have the flat end at the bottom. It's facing this way and facing right, so zero degrees. It's going along the, zero, the x axis. <clears throat> We can't easily change colors of it. We can set the color not too bad, but uh, okay. So let's see what we've got so far then. Uh, first of all, this is a Zim shape as opposed to a CreateJS shape. Already the Zim shape adds some efficiencies in that we don't have to say var shape is a new shape and then say something like var graphics or G we often name as equal to uh, the shape dot graphics. So in CreateJS, maybe back in Flash, maybe on the canvas, but in CreateJS certainly we've got this graphics property on the shapes and then we can start adding things to it. And it might be that you're stuck adding it with big words here like set stroke and that stuff. Set stroke, uh, or is it stroke style? I think this is, anyway, I can't remember those anymore because I never use them. So we're using the, the tiny API that CreateJS gives us. Maybe the Canvas too, I can't remember. Um, where this is a fill, a stroke style, a stroke, the, uh, the size, I guess, this is the color. And then um, this is draw polygon. Well, anyway, we've abstracted this and said, okay, now I'm tired of doing that all the time. Why can't we just put these on the shape? And that way I can, ch oh, I can't chain a center onto that, for instance. I'd have to do this afterwards like that, shape.center, because this is chaining on the graphics property. This is chaining on the object. So after a while, we, we gave up in that Zim and said, okay, let's not do any of that. And let's just allow chaining right on the shape. And by setting our own custom class there, we were able to extend the CreateJS shape and make it work how we wanted, add various things. So, uh, great. Now let's take a bit of a closer look at this polygon. We have a zero, zero for shapes. It, it usually imagines that you're starting at zero, zero, top left corner of the stage. And then you want to position your shape somewhere else, you put in the coordinates here. Well, we don't work that way in Zim usually. Usually we just make the thing and then we position it with this other stuff over here, centering and pose and loc. So this is useless for us and we don't want it. That's why we made a Zim circle, for instance. It's like it's not hard to make a circle here. You would just say draw circle, but then you have to put in zero, zero for the circle and the radius. 
And it's just like, I don't want to have to do that every time I want to draw a circle. So that's why we made the custom circle class. There's really not that much more to it than just removing a few of the things that we, we didn't want and adding a few things that we did want. But we make lots of circles. We make lots of rectangles. And maybe we make lots of polygons, who knows? Uh, so uh, if, you, if you dig making stars, a polygon, by the way, can make a star here. Uh, let's see that. So this is the location. This is your radius of the polygon. This is how uh, many sides it has. And here's how pointy it is. So if it's at zero, it's got no pointies. If you go to something like 0.5, let's have a, a look at what 0.5 does. <clears throat> We refresh here. <laughs> Made a circle. <laughs> it was <just> surprising. <laughs> Ta da! I'm a magician. Uh, misdirection there. Uh, draw a polygon. That's supposed to be. <laughs> and it turned a polygon into. And there we go. It's a star. Again, kind of facing <laughs> a bit tilty. <laughs> uh, but so be it. Um, Right, so where were we? That's how pointy it is. Now that actually can get to some pretty neat things. One will make it at, at the moment disappear unless we had a stroke on it. Do we have a stroke? Yes, all right, yeah, we do have a stroke. So we'll see it as a stick, stick figure. But just be careful, if you don't have a stroke, you wouldn't see anything at the moment because there's no fill. So one is completely collapsed in on itself. Remember, zero is no collapse, but check this out. 1.5. So I really like this. Probably should have. It starts going in reverse. And if we go to 2 here, so here's 2. Hello, creative cloud. Get out of my way. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> okay, it's it's crossed over. <laughs> Let's try 2.5. We're tr trying to get to something that is more than just a star. Uh, double star. How the heck do I usually get to that? Well, maybe it's um because there's five sides. Let's try eight sides or something like that and see what this looks like. Refresh. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, so that somehow had been just writing onto itself. But here is, is what you can do. If you don't have a fill, you don't see that string stuff. And that is how we made this thing right here. Okay, so that's playing around with it a little bit there. Let's undo that a touch and bring it back to, well, that's a star. We'll bring it back to zero. Okay, so on, onward we go, because there's a lot to look at in terms of the custom classes. Um, <clears throat> color. How do, how do we change the color? Imagine that we've got this shape. How would we change the color, or how would we change these numbers? Basically, we'd have to redraw the shape. Um, and that's what we can do. We can still redraw the shape, but I don't want to have to do this. I would rather the custom class handle it for us automatically. So let's um, let's think about that. First of all, changing the color, you can't just go shape.color is equal to blue. Doesn't work. There's this thing called a color command, and we'd have to do this in multiple steps. So it'd be something like shape dot stroke style there. This, uh, then we have to drop it down here. It would be shape dot fill red, and we'd sign, we'd sign this to var um, command. This would be color command, actually. Color command is equal to dot command. All right, so this is how CreateJS has set it up so that fi finally, actually, I mean, they've had it for a while, but in the beginning, there was no way to change a color as far as I know. Then they introduced this system where they you capture the command. I just made a command. Let's capture it. And after you capture it, then you have to use it. You would say color command uh, dot I can't, I can't even remember. It's uh, something like that is equal to blue. And then maybe it'd be blue. Should we see? Is it blue? Uh, refresh here. It is blue. Was it blue to start off with? No, it was red. Hey, that's great. So it worked. That's a little bit twisty. I'd rather not have to think about that stuff just to change the color of a shape. I would rather say something like uh, var poly, I'll call it poly, is equal to a new poly. 
where I can pass in the things I want, which are really just these three things, not, not the zero, zero thing. We can dot center it. And then later, if uh, then later if we want, we can say poly dot color is equal to blue. Uh, we probably pass in a color here as well. How did we lose the color? Oh, it's up in here. So somewhere in here, we could pass in the color, which is blue. We have to make these decisions and dark and a stroke size of two or something like that. So that's what we ended up making is, is something like this. this is what we did with circle. What we did with rectangle is we set up the system where we could pass in the x and or the width and the height, the colors, the strokes, the corners, the you know whatever else, whatever else, uh, the dashed and so forth. Um, here it would be a, a few things at the beginning and then much the same as all the rest of the shapes. And we provide a getter setter method on that so that we could get the color or set the color like this. We already, if we extend a container, we already get things like center and width and height and a bunch of other things that, that come out, animate and drag and all that kind of stuff will come if we extend a container. So that's usually where we would start is so that we don't have to rebuild all that stuff is we would extend a container. So it would look like this. <clears throat> var poly is equal to a new, now let's see, am I going to conflict here at the moment if I already have a polygon? Which version of Zim are we looking at? Yeah, so this is where we're working right now on the next version of Zim. We've we need another number. We're not we're not really a point one. We started with a point one. That's for small changes. We've made tons of big changes. So we want to go to 10.10. .10. And we're not doing that. We got a surprise coming up and, and we're launching. But here is our, our working version at the moment. Um, that means we've already got a poly. Uh, oops, and it would be var poly with a lowercase and oh no, with an uppercase, because we're defining the class. My, my apologies. So here we are now defining the class. So we're going to call it poly. It won't be a new anything. It's going to be a function. <clears throat> Here's where we would put our parameters in here. And uh, that's our class. Now, if we're ES6, it's a little bit different. It would be var poly is equal to uh, class. Mm, round brackets. Oh, no, it doesn't get round brackets. Squigglies like that, I guess. I think that's how it's done. But we're wanting to extend a container. So we'll show you that. Extends a container. So that's the Zim container, which means we'll start off with all of its properties. And in here, you would have the constructor, which is constructor. And this gets the round brackets for the parameters. And in here, we would say um, something like, is it this dot super? No, so we just call the super. Oh, for Pete's sake. I, I'm so busy that I just hit the tomorrow on this, you know, for the last seven days in a row. Say, ah, tomorrow! <laughs> super. <sighs> super and we could pass in any dimensions we wanted to there and now we have this. I think that's how it works. Right. Okay. So, um, great. Otherwise, down here in ES5 it would be extend singular uh, poly. Please extend poly with this container like that. And then in here we would say super uh, actually, we've got this already, this dot super underscore constructor, run that. All right, so there's ES5, e, e, ES5, and here's ES6, ES6. With ES5, we're, we can easily, we don't, we don't have a, we don't have a constructor exactly. We can easily get private variables in here, private functions, no problem. Here, uh, you can't. I just realized that they're suggesting you put all of your, your methods here. But if you just put your methods within the constructor <laughs> on this, you can get private method, uh, private 
properties and functions as well. So it's kind of funny. They give you give us all this stuff. Instead of using the prototype, we can put getter setters and various things down in here. Um, but those getter and setters cannot access the properties from your constructor. Or, you know, so it's like, we're crying out loud. Give us private properties or something. So they, they haven't quite got it working. Um, the other reason why I'm probably not going to show this to you in ES6 version is there's a, a thing called ZimDuo, which allows us to pass in the parameters either as single, uh, single parameters or as a, a, a single parameter um, uh, that is a configuration object, squiggly brackets, okay, the ZimDuo technique. And you may want to use that. We use it all the time. We use it all the time. So we'll comment out the ES6. Otherwise, you can certainly extend with ES6, and it's it's no problem at all. You, just the way ZimDuo works, it reconstructs the the call, and that reconstruction can't work with the class. It's a real pain. It tried like it's already complicated to be able to do that. Um, it's already done for you in this thing called uh, Zob. But um, anyway, I can show you how to use it, but it doesn't it, it doesn't work on the on the actual class thing here, so we're sort of stuck. No big deal. You can see that from an outer structure, there is really not that much difference in, in the two um, arrangements anyway. That is only because both CreateJS and Zim have put a lot of work in making extend work well. <laughs> <laughs> right. Otherwise, you're dealing with, yeah, there's a whole bunch of things you have to think about, but we've, we've made it easy here, <laughs> just as easy as the extends uh, done this way, or, or close, close enough anyway. All right, blah, 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 blah. Let's get going here. So here's where we would put our stuff inside of here. We'd cut this. Remember, we're trying, we're trying to get to that right there, but we'll leave that commented out for now. And we'll paste this in here. Another thing, too, we'll need to be creating this up above where we do that as uh, the class that needs to be created first, if it's stored like this. Um, I think even if it's not stored like that, you run into some problems with the hoisting. So, And then that will be underneath. And where should we put this? I guess here, I suppose. All right. So all that stuff goes in here. Now, we could have extended a shape, so that actually would have been fine to extend a shape. We then wouldn't be able to put anything in there, and we're not really supposed to be able to, we're not supposed to put anything into a rectangle, for instance, or in a circle. However, it is handy when that happens, and I think there were some handy other things for it to be a container as well. I can't remember what they are now, but in the dawn of Zim, when we first made these things, there were some things that we needed, uh, like mouse, uh, it wasn't mouse children, because if we didn't, if it were just a shape, we wouldn't have any children. I can't remember, but there was some other, there was another issue as to why we went with um, the shapes as containers rather than the shapes as extending a shape, as in, sorry, the circles, rectangles, triangle shapes extending a container rather than the circle, rectangle, triangle shapes extending the shape. But if you, if you want, you could extend the shape. There's really not too much difference, as you'll see here. So we may have a shape. We should provide the outside world access to that shape if they ever want it. Uh, that's up to you. And the way you would do that is you would say this dot shape is equal to. So this stores it locally, where we get to use shape from now on. We don't have to keep on saying this dot shape, this dot shape, this dot shape, which is annoying. So we've got a local variable that we use within here, but if we want to make this public to the outside, we just throw the, this keyword onto it. And that means from the outside, we can have access to that. Um, we'll then want to add this shape, the new shape that we're making, although we should probably, uh, it, may, it may not matter with our origin in the middle here, and it may not matter at all ever, but um, let's add the shape once we've, created the shape. So dot center, we don't need to dot center it. That would be centering it on the stage. We just want to add to is fine. And uh, this. So this is the container. We've just made the shape and added to this. If you extended a shape, then you wouldn't even have this shape here because the whole thing is the shape. And every all of this stuff that you're doing right here, oh, no, I guess the super constructor would be the shape. 
So we would just say this dot would be something like this. We'd have no add though. Copy the dot be added because it is a shape. See that? So if you extend the shape, this is basically the shape now. And right on the shape, if it's a Zim shape that you're extending, right on the shape, you could start doing this stuff. And it just ignores this one line. So anyway, a container is just one extra line and it, it can be handy for other things. Oh, I remember what it was. It was things like outline, I think get put on the, con like in the container itself and then it can be moved around or it was something along those lines. Anyway, var shape is equal to a new shape, the color command. Do we need to stay, store the color command? I guess since we made it, I suppose we can. Yeah. All right. So we've stored the color command. We'd also have to store the stroke command. Maybe. I, can't, I think, no, I think it's one command for both the stroke and stroke style, but maybe not. Uh, so if we wanted to modify those later, like change the thickness of the stroke, we would need to also store the command for that. And uh, then this stuff is going to come from the parameters. So let's put the parameters in here. That was radius, uh, side, sides, I guess, point size color, border, color, border, width, that'll do for now. There's also a dashed and you'd have to store a dashed command as well. So the radius is here, five, a uh, hundred I mean, sides is five, point size is zero, color is there, Border color is here. Border width is there. Okay, we don't want to set the command to blue. Oh, but we do. We might want to do that later when we grab the color. Okay, so if we wanted to make a getter setter method on there to grab the color, let me just pop into. Well, this is the poly. So. Uh, just since we're here and we're exploring, this is the poly. Here are the parameters that we're going to be changing. Oh crap, the percents, uh, those are wrong. Those are for circles. So we copied this over from the circle, but left that in there up in the top. I think we fixed it down below there. All right, so there's um, examples of what's happening there. And then we've got the Zim Duo technique thing. We've also got Zim V, we've, uh, which allows for dynamic parameters. And maybe we'll get to that in this one. I, I don't know. And there's information about the parameters. Then there's some methods, the color ranges and caches. Now, these few methods are more specific to the shapes. And there's also all of the Zim fourth methods like drag, hit test, and all those. All those are get applied automatically to each of our display objects. And then there's methods of create chess, such as on set bounds. Although I think Zim overrides the set bounds, right? Uh, anyway, it does in the container. So here's a bunch of properties as well. So these are properties that we would not normally have if we just had the shape there. We wouldn't be able to change these things as properties. So that's why we're using the custom class so that we can do that, change those properties. What was I doing? I was coming in here to just grab the getter setter methods. I don't quite remember yet, but here uh, one is, right? That's what it looks like. And I usually just go find one and copy it. Let's do that here. I can actually type this out if I think about it after doing it for so many years. Initially, it was like, oh, well, ah. and it is, to be truthful, it is. We would just take this kind of thing right here, these two functions. And in the ES6 version, uh, they would go kind of right down in here like that. And I think the keywords, so it would just be get, and we would say the name of the function, which was uh, radius like that is equal to the function so that is what they've done in ES6 they provided that 
on the on the poly class. Okay, I can't do that. Put that back again. Uh, yeah. So something like that, I believe. I can't remember for sure, but it's something like that. So did you see what I did? I just took the stuff that we had inside this definition right here. I just took those things and put them out as getter setter methods. So, I mean, uh, you know, it's not that much of a difference, right? It is a touch nicer, but I mean, if you just go copy this stuff, it really doesn't make a difference um, time-wise. All right, so let's come on back to here. Comment out our ES6. And paste that into our ES5. Where the heck did our ES5 go? Uh, okay, we did paste already, good. But I wanna do the color first. Radius would be something similar. So for the color, um, we want to store a color as well. So we'll probably do something like var uh, underscore color is equal to color like that. And usually I do that up at the top here. We also need default colors. So um, if color is equal to null, color is equal to what color should our default be? <laughs> Gray. There we go. Just so that it's not the default color black, which is what it would actually be. So there's our default color. We can also specify, we can just keep on using that color. Okay, forget it. You, you, you can use the underscore things to, to hold all your local ones. But you don't actually have to. You, we could just keep on using this color, and that's fine. So we'll just say color here. Occasionally, you might run into a problem with that, but not usually. And then we would say color is equal to whatever value we're passing in. So this is returning what our color is. And this one is receiving a property, a color property, where we're going to set the color to that value. And we don't need to redraw the shape. The redrawing the shape was for the radius. For the radius, we have to redraw the shape. But here, can you see what we're going to do? We just grab that and we say the color command dot style is equal to this color. Like so. I guess you could do that all in one. All right. So there is our property to um, set the color from the outside. All right, are we ready to test this thing? I don't know. We're adding it to this. We've put our, our, all our stuff in there, and we're extending a container with the polygon. That's our ES6 stuff. Maybe we'll collapse that for now. Var poly is equal to a new poly. We're passing in this stuff. We're centering it, and we're changing it to blue. How about purple? Bur oh, yeah, because it was blue to start. Is it always blue to start? <laughs> No, hopefully, hopefully that color command worked. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> I was so happy when that worked. Maybe it's because it was blue to start. I changed it to blue. So uh, we could take a quick peek here as to how that's applied. Um, oh, the color is elsewhere. Uh, darn. Um, yeah. So what we've done in the latest version of Zim, not in the, the current version, but in the latest one that we're building, is note that this thing, the poly, the poly extends a, cust a Zim dot custom shape. So uh, let's a zim dot custom shape. So I'm going to mark this poly so we can get back to it. And I'm going to look for not color. What was it? Um, oh yeah. Well, it was called um, custom zim dot custom shape is equal to. So here is that class that you'll be able to use as well. So this is custom shape. It's in the late the upcoming version of zim you will be able to extend the custom shape to automatically get things like adjusting color and borders and, and dashes and stuff like that in shapes. 
So what we realized after we built the circle and then the rectangle and the triangle is they all used the same kind, kinds of thing. We thought it was going to end there. We didn't really care too much. But when we started adding blobs, squiggles, now polygons and lines, all those things are using a bunch of um, properties. And let's see them here. So there's the, the property for uh, color. Here's the color range to be able to animate from one color to another and how we can set that. Here's the border color. Here's the border width. There's the thickness um, for things that have thicknesses and dashed. Dashed offset. Corner. And a couple older depreciated or deprecated uh, methods. So all of our shapes have those things. And this used to be in the code for each of the shapes. Well, we've now abstracted that out because it's common to all of them. Uh, it's still not as common as a container and the things a container have. So this thing extends a container, as you can see here. So this custom shape extends a Zim container. And now all our shapes extend this thing. And so you'll have this to extend as well if if that's helpful for you, if there's any more shapes that you really need. Um, all right, so what was I checking? Oh yeah, how, how, the, how to set the color. It is indeed the color command dot style is the value. Okay, so let's have a look back and see what we've got here. Looks good, and we're gonna try it out. Okay, starts off blue, we're gonna see if it goes to purple. And we open in browser, had it open in browser, refresh. We don't see anything, so F12. That is not defined. Oh, right. Okay, so when you have your own private methods, if we were to make a function in here, function, and try and access this inside of here, this dot whatever, this dot shape, blah, blah, blah. We couldn't do that because this would refer to the function. Oh, what is this function? This is function private, like that. Uh, this would refer to the function. So usually what we do is we say var that is equal to this. This is all throughout Zim is saying this is really our object. And we put that in a local variable, that. And that way we would use that here. So I tend to use that throughout uh, the code because it doesn't really matter if you use it within private functions or in, in methods or just in the um, constructor itself. Often, so there's that being referred to. You know, this would have worked, but uh, we copied it over from when I was using that. <laughs> this or that, hey, you know, whatever. <laughs> All right, so um, let's see. What do we want to do with this? Uh, okay, so it had a problem with that. I think we're good now, though. Refresh, and there's a purple, uh, purple hectagon. Okay, so, sorry, I've said okay a lot. I'm, as mentioned, um, in this Zim Explorer. Yes, I'm, I've been at it very, very hard over the last uh, week solid of coding. So my, my mind, my brain is a little bit out of it. Hopefully you're not um, upset at that or this, <laughs> this or that. Uh, okay, good. We're moving along. We've got a custom color property put in here, and that's good. Now, what other types of things can we do? Are, are you okay with that? That means like we could do the radius in the same way. Now, the radius has to redraw the shape, so not quite the same way. Let's, I suppose, put that together. Uh, we don't have to remake a shape. We don't have to remake the color command, I don't think, or maybe we do. Let's see, do we or don't we? Yeah, we would have to remake the color command. We can re redraw in this shape though, but this stuff's gonna have to go in a function, which we can call something like make shape. And go, and it's a function, function, make shape like so. Now, if you're extending that other thing that we had before, this should be a method on, on the class so that we can operate it from our super class. 
you know what I mean? Uh, we, ha we have that custom class. If we were extending our custom shape or whatever, it needs to be able to call make shape. And therefore, it would be something like this dot make shape is equal to function. Do that if we want. I mean, I may as well that way. It's one less thing to remember to change. So there it is. And we would also call it under here, this dot or that <laughs> make shape like so. So have we changed anything yet? Not really, right? We've just put this couple, these two things into a function that we can call anytime we want. Oh yeah, we put, we have changed something. The color command is inside here. Color command is inside. That means we can't access it from here. Uh, I think we stored it on the object. Yeah, we did. So we may have accessed the color command as well from the super class. So we called uh, this, this dot color command. Or let's start using that just in case. Now, in this case, because we put it on this as a function, the this would actually refer to that, I think. I can't remember. But anyway, just in case that and maybe it doesn't. Yeah, it's only. No, th that's um, that's okay because this is uh, uh, the this function will get the scope of this. Um, anyway, so we wouldn't need to use that there, but uh, <laughs> whatever, we shall. And there's an add to this, so we can say add to that. And now the color command is that dot color command, and we would access it like so, like that. All right, let's try her out. Make sure we didn't get any boo-boos, the boo-boo-boos. Those are other things. Where, where are we trying this? Oh, we're trying it in the very file that we're in. Wow, that's easy. Okay, starts off blue. How about pink this time? So we save that up and refresh here. <clears throat> pink is still working good, so we're still able to change the color. Still able to change the color. And why did we do this? We did this because if we wanted to change the radius, we'd have to redraw this shape. So now our radius would look like the radius in, uh, <laughs> can you believe it? The radius is back in the other one. So let's uh, bookmark this custom shape, F1. Go to the second one, which was poly, where we had the radius. Not everything has a radius. So only the ones that had a radius we put in here. So there's the radius code. And here we might have a radius code. <clears throat> that dot underscore radius, we could just for the time being use radius. Oh, right. Um, well, the reason why we changed it to that color is that we were actually accessing the color from outside as well. <laughs> so <laughs> let's get that all worked out. Uh, if color is equal to, we will say that. Oh, I can't call it that dot color. Here's where we run into the issue. So if we, if we need it to, I can't say that dot color is equal to color because that's this right here. That's what that dot color is <clears throat> or this dot color. Um, so that's why we use the underscore color there. Otherwise we get this thing looping in on itself. So we're going to bring in the color, store it in a local, um, a local variable, not local anymore. This is only because we're needing to access this stuff from the super class later. So I'm sort of setting it up now so that if you do extend that other one, it will just be a little bit easier for you. And that would be that dot color here and that dot color here. <clears throat> or with the underscore, sorry. Uh, good. Shall we do a test? Where did we bring in our, def our, our default color? Right here. Okay, so we're good there. All right, so we save that. And what color shall we change it to this time? Gray. Oh, I'm feeling a little gray. Refresh. Gray it is. Okay, that's good. 
And how about this radius thing that's that's happening here? What's going on here? So we want the same issue with radius. We may as well call it that dot radius, which is what it was, I think. And for our radius, we can bring in something similar. Radius. What color? <laughs> Won't be a color or <laughs> radius 100 as our default radius. Now, what do we use in here then? In here, we shouldn't be using the color, we should be using that dot color. Oh, that dot underscore color, and same with the border colors and all that stuff. But we haven't adjusted those, and we won't bother that dot underscore radius. All right, so now we're set up. Uh, now we're set up so that the make shape function can be called from that other from the super class if needed. Okay, and so that's why we did all of that uh, adjustment. We didn't really change much aside from the names of these things, but this stuff now can be called from the super class if if needed, and indeed. Um, for instance, if we set a border, actually, I think the border, maybe, is there anything that changes that calls that? Yeah, there are definitely some things that call the make shape from the super class. All right, so where'd we get to? Test, may as well test. And we'll change it to green. See what we're doing as we test? Oopsies, we run into a problem. Uh, I may as well check the errors, probably tell us right away. That dot underscore radius is not defined. So what do we do with the radius? That dot underscore radius. Did I spell it wrong somewhere? That dot underscore radius. That dot color is radius. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, what was that that it said? What was that? Let's explore that error again. F12. Reference error on what line? 57. That, oh, that underscore radius. Okay. That makes sense. Did you see it? Did you see it? But you forgot the dot. That dot, dot. I think that's the first time I. I can the first time I can recall forgetting a dot. <laughs> I've never done that before. You you probably have, but not me. No, not Doctor Abstract does not forget his dots. Okay, so um, there's green. Good. So any questions so far? Stick them down into the into the little questions thing. I should do these live one day, huh? One day I probably will. I've been doing lots of you know lots of live coding with people and students and stuff. It'd be uh, fun to live code with the world if we get enough following. So uh, let me know if that would be of interest to you. There's our poly. What do we need to look at? How about some of the treats? Um, this is it, basically. Now, there are people that go out and stick this stuff in front of everything, uh, this in front of everything. I usually don't do that. This is a special case where we're, I'm, I'm looking ahead and we're, we're going to have to provide this stuff to our super class, and that's why those are put in there like that. Uh, it may not be the, the best structure to do it that way. It was kind of like a fill, you know, we we threw this uh, super class in there, like one, one more up and uh, kind of didn't plan that from the beginning. Might have planned it differently. But anyway, good enough for now. So we've seen how to extend a container. We've seen how to uh, set up our parameters. For the default parameters, if you do look through Zim, we've got this thing called Zot. And it looks like this, zot color. When we first started out with Zim, <clears throat> sorry, when we first started out with Zim, it was a little bit unclear how to make a default parameter work with everything. 
turns out that it boils down to how we had it before. If the parameter is equal to null, double equal to null, and that handles, I think, all cases. Um, we are running into problems, upcoming problems with ES6 in that they don't use null for, if we pass in null, it actually assigns null. It's like, oh God, really? You're going to do that to us? Are you serious? So ES6 here, if you set up the default parameters, that looks like this, I'll show you. You set up default parameters in here, such as color equals uh, number sign zero, zero, zero. Well, make it a different number, three, three, three. Okay, so that's a default color. But if I made a new poly down here and I passed in, well, it's got the first parameter as a color. If I passed in null, which we've been doing for default parameters, I'm expecting that to be 333, and it's not. Uh, we have to pass in undefined. And so like, where'd that come from? Oh, crap. Yeah. So that's ES6. And I'm, you know, I just do not want to go back and sort of change a thousand different places that I passed in null as a parameter. So it's like crying out loud. So I, uh, we are not updating Zim to ES6 internally. There's just no reason that that needs to be done. Just none at all. Uh, you're welcome to use ES6 on the outside. No problem. And we do. So we're now using ES6 on the outside and code pen and blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's no problem. And you're welcome to use TypeScript and things like that. And that's fine. But there's no reason for us to update internally to ES6, it would just be, uh, you know, just no reason. All right, so um, that's just a little bit of warning about the null and the undefined bit there. You can pass undefined into Zim stuff and it will, it will grab the right things for you. So we can pass undefined into any of these things if we wanted to. It's set up, uh, but what was the point here? Where were we? Let's collapse that then. Oops. No, it's not collapsing either. One day I can hit that slash all around it. I can't remember what we were doing. We we're up here. We were talking about parameters. Oh, right. You may see a bunch of zots. So a zot was, we were trying to figure it out. We initially had a longer equation for detecting uh, if a parameter there is there or not. Problem is if we passed in zero for something, like uh, zero for the border width, for instance, you, you can't just say if, oh, this would be border width, if border width is, uh, if border width, uh, or if not border width, there we go. So you can't just say if there's not a border width, then set the border width. Because if you passed in zero, that would trigger as a, you'd end up getting a custom, you'd end up getting the default border width rather than zero as a border width. So uh, happens zero is the border width, but you know anyway that's a danger. So we had created something, and, and that's why we made zot. Zot was just a way to detect whether or not something existed. As it turns out, as mentioned, um, that's just the same as what we had before. <laughs> just simply that. But you'll see a bunch of zots all over the place inside of Zim if you look inside there. That's that's why we mention it. So if we go into Zim here and look up at how we're receiving if zot radius, and that's all that is. Zot means not. And sometimes you get the if not zot, <laughs> which means that something's there. Now there's a bunch of other things. Okay, hey, tell you what, now that we're here, let's now look and we'll, we'll look at some specific things to do with Zim. And you know what? Why don't we break this into two explorers? It's already been, you've probably been watching this for a long time. And you may want to go get a cookie or something. You can come back and take a look at, at the second video. So uh, that way, I'll, I'll, I'll go get a cookie. <laughs> and uh, then we can, <laughs> we can continue the explore. Um,
in a, in a second version of custom classes where we look at some of the uh, pretty cool Zim features that we can apply to custom classes. I am Dr. Abstract. <laughs> uh, if, you're, if you're digging this, come on in and join us at zimjs.com slash slack. Hope to see you there. Hope you're enjoying working with Zim. Ciao.